Welcome from Pennsylvania. Uh, welcome from New York City. Okay, now. Okay, everything is going. It looks like everything is working. All right, can everybody out there hear Tom and hear me and see Tom and yes. see me? Click yes if you can. Please. Okay, Tom, we're good to go. It looks like everybody's doing good. Okay. Now, oh, Carl, I can hear loud all the way over here from you. All right, now, here we go. Now, um, texture and color. Uh, today can is. I, can, John, Tom, can I just jump in one second before mm -hmm. you start? I just want everybody to know because you're not going to say it, so I'm going to say it for you. I'm doing commercial. Tom just wrote a new book, guys. <laughs> Tom wrote a new book, and a lot of the information you're going to hear in this, in this in the next hour is from his new book. Um, and uh, it's incredible information that we're going to be sharing with you. So I just thought I'd put a commercial for you, Tom, because I think that you're too humble to do it yourself. So <laughs> let's go. <laughs> uh, I, it's the very last slide that I put in today is for the book. <laughs> All right. So now, um, uh, today I want to talk about texture and how it relates to coloring the hair. And most people don't realize how important the texture is when you're considering everything about a hair color formula because texture relates to the depth of the natural color, brassiness when natural color is lightened, the concentration of dye in the color formula the tonality of the formula and the strength of the developer. All of these have an interrelationship with the texture of your hair. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you this. My, I love this slide. Remember this one? This is you, Melanin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tom, I want to jump in, Tom, one second. I just want to make sure we're on the same page here, guys. When we're talking about texture here, we're talking about fine, medium, coarse. We're not talking about curl pattern because the word texture now is being used for several different things. And some people say, you know, curly hair, wavy hair, all that. We're not talking that. We're strictly talking diameter of a hair. Fine, Good. medium, coarse. Okay. Yep. Good. Now, look at the melanin that I have here, this picture. This is real melanin you melanin inside the granules that are inside your hair and we have the ability to dissolve your hair and collect the granules in the bottom of a test tube or in the bottom of a beaker and that's what this picture shows it shows you melanin that has been collected in a beaker that we can then use to test the hair with and do a bunch of test um, coloring and a bunch of other things with it. And what I did was I took real eumelanin, pure eumelanin, and I put it into three different um, beakers. Now, these three beakers represent fine, medium, and coarse textured hair. Now, Obviously, the one on the far right is the coarse textured hair. But I put the identical amount of eumelanin into each of these three beakers so that you see fine hair, which is represented by the beaker all the way to the left, is darker even though it contains the identical amount of melanin as the beaker all the way to the far right. So the coarse, the coarse, the coarse one here, and um, can, uh, David, can you see my? Uh, yep, yep. Okay. I see a cursor with your name on it. Okay. So, so the fine one here, and the coarse one here have the identical amount of melanin in them. It's just that because the diameter is so large, on this one the final color is actually lighter, even though it contains the same amount of melanin. So that's one super important fact to remember. 
Now, now I'm going to show it to you the same thing, but in a but in a different representation, and that is here. If you look all the way to this fine textured hair, you'll see that it has less melanin in it than the coarse textured hair. However, all three of these are the same level of natural color. It's because of the texture that they appear that that they're all the same color because it takes less melanin to make fine hair as dark as coarse hair. Right. Right. Tom, on the slide, there were your previous slide, the beakers. Uh, if you have the, the same amount of melanin in each one of these beakers, and uh, would this, if this was real hair, that means that the thicker hair wouldn't be as dark as the thinner hair, the finer that, hair? That is so correct. So, so to make the to make to make all these the same amount, the same color, you would have to have a lot more melanin inside the medium and coarse texture hair to match up with the fine texture. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Yes. So now let me go back to here. <clears throat> but now, so what David just said was, in order, in order, um, this shows them all the same color. Uh, uh, medium brown. This is medium brown. Excuse me. This is dark blonde. This is dark blonde. This is dark blonde. But because of the texture, it takes more pigment to make this dark blonde than this dark blonde. But now here's where it gets a little crazy. Because brassiness <clears throat> Now, it looks like this one is brassier because it is the largest one. Even though they're all the same color, dark blonde, dark blonde, dark blonde, when you lighten them, the one that is the coarsest texture, the largest diameter, appears brassier than the other two because there's more melanin. Hmm. Got it? Okay. So, but, but, okay, let me let me clarify here. So, I think so which is so we're saying here, Tom, is that assuming we put got a strand of hair and all the three strands were the same color but three different textures and we put a lightener, for example, a bleach product on all three strands given the same amount of time, the lighter these the these finer texture will appear lighter where the coarser texture will still be in the brassy side. Is that what we're saying here? That's exactly correct. <clears throat> texture plays a part in the lightening of hair color. Any questions from anyone so far? Because I know that this is, this, <clears throat> we're off in a real strange tangent here in a real strange world. So it's not always easy to understand everything that we're talking about. But at any time, if anyone wants to ask a question, go ahead and, uh, and, and type it in and then we'll respond. <clears throat> so now, let me show you now what happens when you try to tone these different textures of hair. Now remember, all three of these are the same color. They started out as um, dark blonde, dark blonde, dark blonde, but because it's coarser, it looks like it's brassier. Now, here's what happens when you put a dye on top of them. You don't get the same result. Consequently, mm -hmm. the medium textured hair looks pretty much um, the way it should look. In other words, it, it colors correctly <laughs> because all hair coloring products have been designed for medium textured hair. But the hair that's fine can go darker than you anticipate because the texture of the hair sucks in the same amount of dye, but because it's a smaller texture, smaller diameter, it looks darker and it is darker. 
But now look at the look at the coarse textured one. Coarse textured hair requires you to change the formula and increase the concentration concentration of the dye because the coarse textured hair will not look as deep and will always look warmer than the medium textured mm -hmm. than the fine textured. Tom, so Julie, far, has, Julie has a question here about the texture. She says, how are they the same level? Um, I think that the fine hair would appear to be deeper. Julie, I think he's talking about the, the level being the level of the color prior to the bleaching process. The colors were all the, there are three different textures, but they're all the same color. They're all the same level. Um, I think that's what he means. Yeah. Hold and on that, a second. Tom. Hold on a second. You see I'm that? Pulling up, I'm pulling up the messages. I didn't have it. Um, I didn't have them up before. Okay. Now I can see messages. Okay. So now uh, let me go back uh, here to this, to this one, first of all. Now, even though this is fine, this is medium, and this is coarse, they're all the same level of natural color. It takes less eumelanin to make fine hair dark blonde than it does coarse hair. You have to increase the melanin because of the texture of the hair. So now let me go back here to where, to the next one again. So when we lighten the three of them, even though they are all the same color, the medium texture appears a little bit brassier than the fine texture, and the coarse texture appears even brassier. This is why one color formula never works on all hair types. How many times have you either yourself or have seen someone or have seen the result of someone putting a color on coarse textured hair and it always comes up brassy? And it's because there's not enough dye in the color to compensate for the texture of the hair. So far, so good. Okay, I need clarification here. First of all, Deborah, Deborah Writings, you can't hear me? Can anybody else hear me? I okay. can hear you. Okay, she can talk too, okay. Wow, who was that? Yeah, I think no, we this have- This is Janet. And yeah. I got kicked off the visual. You know what, Tom, I can't we have... see my screen, it's telling me I can't get on. Okay. There is a maximum, it says that there's a maximum amount of attendees. That's what it said for me too. It's yeah, so it's not letting me get on, and I already signed up for it. Um, me too. Tom. Well, wait a minute. I this Tom. is supposed to be open to two hundred people. Yes, David. We should have the listen only as opposed to um, discussion part. Well, I, I have no visual. This is Janet. Okay. I, I don't understand why there's no visual when I've hit, when it's supposed to have. Uh... Can everybody else see us and hear us both? Please just get us an answer. Oh, wait a minute. Those, those two people, David, are on their phones and not on computers. That might be the issue. Oh, oh. Okay. Um, Okay, everybody can see us, everybody can hear us. That's on regular computers, I guess. And you know, that must be an issue with their phone. I don't think it has an issue to do with what, what we're doing, Tom. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. He just pulled my... Tex Martin says he can pulled. see us and hear us both on his, on his, on his, uh, on his phone. So we're good. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, right, I, don't, I don't know what right, to say right, about that. But right. go, going to back to where we were, texture. So consequently, uh, uh, here's what I said last. Fine hair takes less pigment than coarse hair. When you color the hair, you never get the same result according to the texture of the hair. Uh, let me see what I said after this. 
for coarse textured hair and for cool or neutral result, the formula must be ash or more ash according to the texture of the hair. The exception is white hair. Coarse white hair only requires more concentration of the dye. In other words, if you have, let me go back to um, this one here. If there was no pigment in here whatsoever, if these were just simply three white strands of hair and I wanted to color them to dark blonde, I would simply use dark blonde except the medium textured would come out dark blonde. The fine textured would come out deeper than dark blonde. It would come up a very dark, uh, the darkest of blonde or the lightest of brown. And coarse hair wouldn't look dark blonde at all. It would look uh, more medium blonde because the dye that we put into the hair diffuses into the entire cortex. And consequently, the same dye does not give you the same result on fine, medium, and coarse textured hair. So this is the main reason why sometimes when we color hair, um, when we color hair, that the hairline may get much darker than the rest of the hair. That's so part you, of it, yes. A lot of times the hairline is finer texture, is that correct? Yes. And it absorbs more color and gets darker. That's why for the when you have super fine hair around the hairline, you don't put the color on it until the la, until after half the processing time, uh, because it's better to have it a little bit lighter in color than it is dark, uh, and darker than the rest of the hair. Good. All right. Yeah. All right. Now. I've made a chart. Now, I think most of you have seen this chart before. And uh, if you'll send me an email, I will send you this chart because it is how you create different types of ash, but soft ash, ash, and smoky ash. Let me go back to this page. For coarse textured hair, for a cool or neutral result, so for a neutral result, you have to put in a slightly ash color in order to get a neutral result because the hair, the, the hair itself, when it lightens, becomes warm. If it's coarse textured hair, you have to have more ash in the formula. So now let me go back to this formula. So if you are working and you want to create a... a a dark blonde color and you're working with just simply white hair, then you can use all three of these colors and get the result exactly that you want, which would be a smoky and ash or a soft ash. But if you're working according to texture, then medium textured hair always requires that you go through the, the this ash line here if it's pigmented in order to get a neutral result. Now, I know that's very confusing. David, did you did you grasp what I just said? <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. Uh, I know I know sometimes I get, I get very confusing, but well, I think I think the first thing we have to clarify Tom is that is that you know this this makes a lot more sense for chromastics users. But people that are non-chromastics users may not have these concentrates. But um, I just I just want to say something here that if you don't have these concentrates, you can get them and use them in any color line. Uh, because what we're talking about here is taking a neutral color and making it into an ash color by adding your own ash, your ash by adding your own your own drabbing action basically. So green green concentrate is the mildest form of ash color that you can use in a product. Blue concentrate is the strongest, deepest color to really mute out very, very strong um, brassy or orangey undertones. And then you, or you can mix the green and the blue, which gives you kind of a, let's say a turquoise, a green, a green, a green, greenish blue ash, which makes it more of a medium ash. But these concentrates can be used with, across the board with any color line that you may be using if you happen not to be using a chromastics user. But if you are a chromastics user, just follow what you have right here. 
Yeah, and what I did is I just simply put a picture. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. And the, see what David just said? Blue concentrate should only be used for a smoky result. It's too strong to use it by itself unless you're working on coarse textured hair. Got it? I mean, I yeah. would use blue blue concentrate like an inch maybe. You know, I mean, very, very seldom would you ever use any more than that. I mean, that's what I found, Tom. I find it very strong. It is ex exceptionally strong. Yeah. But... It, 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 well, you know, know what it reminds me of is like in the old days, you know, before, you know, back 100 years ago when I first started coloring hair, um, I was using Miss Clairol. And we used to put on our blondes, we used to put a little cap full of 52, which was sable black, right? Yes. Remember yeah. that? Yep. Uh, Megs Cavanaugh's on this call. She may remember that one. You know, the little trick was, and they'll say, well, you're doing a blonde. You can put black in there, but just a little teeny bit of black really up, grabbed it out yeah. and made it, made it real smoky, you know, and here's what we're doing, the same kind of thing. Basically, we're giving you smoke. Meg says she remembers that. <laughs> Everybody remembers number 52, Clairol. <laughs> uh, and um, I'll tell you a little secret that uh, nobody in the world knows, but... Um, I met, and many times, Elvis Presley's hairstylist. Now, Elvis Presley did not have black hair. Elvis Presley was a brunette. He had a, a between a light and a medium natural brown color. And his colorist told me that they were using Miss Clairol 51 on his hair his entire life. Uh, because that's... The, he wanted black <laughs> hair. He thought it was dramatic. I don't know why I interjected that. Let me go here to this next slide. Skin tone. Now, there's, this is very, very important. Your skin tone determines how light you can be when you bleach the hair. Because not everyone can be lightened to pale blonde without excessive damage. By excessive damage, I mean the hair falling apart. When you alkalize the hair, the protein in the hair changes to the color yellow. And the darker your skin, the deeper the yellow. So now here, look at this first. Um, this is natural hair in which the protein of the hair is not turned yellow yet. It's just sort of a neutral background color. And all these little dots are the pigment in your hair. When you put bleach on the hair or anything that's alkaline, and alkaline means anything with a pH that's higher than the, than the acid mantle of the hair, which is a 4.5 to 5.5, so when you put hair color on the hair, the first thing that happens is even before any bleaching action happens is that the melanin, the protein of the hair turns yellow. Well, if your hair is, if your skin is light in color, then the melanin, excuse me, the protein of the hair becomes a light yellow color. But if you have darker skin tones, then the, the protein of your hair becomes a deeper yellow. But if you have dark skin tone, then this is where you get the, melt, the protein of your hair becomes a very strong mustardy yellow color. And this is the stage that when all the pigment is gone from people's hair that is very dark, excuse me, people whose skin is very dark, you have this strong yellow color. And people confuse this yellow color with, re with residual hair color. It is not residual hair color. It is the protein of the hair that's the yellow. And the only way you can get rid of this is by destroying the actual protein of the hair and by turning it into peach fuzz where the hair falls apart. That's why not everybody can become a pale blonde. Deeper skin, deeper yellow protein. 
So basically, when we're talking about making a double process blonde or we're bleaching the hair out, you're saying that some people just can't be an actual very, very light blonde because that hair will break off before it becomes light enough yeah. to give her a pale yellow, uh, pale yellow base for a toner. Is that correct? That is correct. How many times yeah. have you seen hair on yeah. the floor? And then the mistake that everybody does is they think they have to put someone under a dryer because the, uh, the dryer kicks it up. But what in fact what it does is the dryer dramatically increases the damage to the hair. And by increasing the damage to the hair, you end up causing the hair to fall off the top of the head. It's as simple as that. But even though, you, let's say, for example, you, you're bringing someone up as light as you possibly can, and you're still not going to make them a pale blonde, uh, you could tone it down to the color you want. I mean, it's not going to be a light, like, like, like a very light, light blonde. You, but you can, you, even though what you're looking at is not pigment, is protein, that can still be colored deeper. Yes. Is that correct? You yes. can still tone can, that, right? You can make them a deeper blonde, but you cannot make them a platinum blonde or a very, very pale white, uh, cream white blonde. They have right. to be a darker blonde. Right. Right. This is why I always say, you know, when someone comes in for a double process, for example, they want to be a really light blonde and their hair is really dark. Um, you got you got to do a test strand first. You got to do a yeah. pre you got to pre bleach it, take a pre you know, really bleach it out, see where it takes you uh, and see what you can get out of it before you promise that lady she can be done because sometimes you just can't do it. And even today, Tom, it's not only double process blondes, but with all the fashion shades, I mean, you got to bleach the hair out to almost yeah. a pale yellow before you can use any fashion color on it. That, that is true. And part of the problem is the way people bleach hair. They make yeah. some, they, I'm going to, the next two slides are about bleaching yeah. uh, or three of them. And I want to hit on one particularly important point, And that is what everyone is basically doing wrong when they're bleaching hair and why you have so much damage to the scalp and to the hair. So first, let me move to this slide here. And it says bleaching melanin. Now, here's your natural hair over here again. Uh, in its natural state, the little dots represent the melanin inside the hair. The, this little bit of yellow, this, this soft, soft yellow represents the protein of the hair. Well, darker hair means more melanin, which means you need more lightening. So let's start with when you begin to lighten um, dark hair. You immediately go into this stage here, which is a very, very brassy uh, orange stage. And then slowly you move up to a lighter version, then a lighter version, because you're destroying the actual melanin of the hair and it's getting, it's, it's, it's coming out of the hair completely. Eventually you end up with that pale yellow, which is the end of all hair color. It means this is only the protein of the hair that's left. The color is all gone. It should never be white. It should always be pale yellow. Now, if you're starting out with a color that's not dark blonde, excuse me, dark brown, then you may skip this step. You may start here instead, where it's only not as quite as brassy because the hair is, is a, either a finer textured or it is less pigment in the hair. If you're starting with a natural blonde, you may start somewhere between here and here. So you, you never know where you're gonna begin until you actually start bleaching the hair. But the darker the color, the brassier the result, requiring more lightning action. But here's where a couple of errors begin. First of all, fine textured hair has less pigment and often requires a lower volume of developer. Coarse textured hair has more pigment and can require a higher volume of developer. But here, I'm talking about hair color, not bleaching. When bleaching, you use 20 volume developer for most hair. The exception would be fine hair. 
you don't increase the 20 volume developer. You increase the concentration of the persulfates in the hair for coarse textured. And here's the actual formulas that I do. Now, once again, um, this is using products that I make, which are XL cream and XL powder. But for a gentle on the scalp lightening mixture, notice that all three of these mixtures contain 20 volume. None of them contain 30 or 40 volume. So instead, what you do is you put a small amount of persulfate, which is XL powder. It's pure persulfates. So if you put a small amount of powder in a cream with 20 volume, you have a gentle scalp lightener. If you want regular strength, then it tells you how much to use one scoop of powder plus 30 grams of cream. And then it tells you for extra strength to use 45 grams of, of powder and 15 grams of cream. Now, you notice what I've done. In each one of these instances, I never increased the 20 volume developer. I increased the strength of the lightener by changing the amount of persulfate in the formula. Here's the problem. Excuse me, the powder bleach is the one that has a persulfate. The cream right. has no, no persulfate. Right. And all, all powder lighteners are made of persulfates. Got it? Now, notice the 20 volume, 20 volume, 20 volume. When you go from 20 to 30 volume developer, this is when you start doing damage to excessive damage to the hair. And it's also when you do something that's kind of interesting, because if you put an on the scalp lightener on someone's hair, in other words, on the scalp, once again, on the scalp lightener, as soon as you go above 20 volume developer, you are taking a chance on burning the scalp. So consequently, do not go above 20 volume developer on the scalp. If you want to do anything, add steam heat to it, but keep an eye on it. Got it? So, uh, Tom, I need to clarify something here, I think. Um, <clears throat> most other, okay, you, with, with Chromastics, you've developed XL powder that can be intermixed with the XL cream to make an on the scalp developer. But um, am I right in saying that most manufacturers don't do that? I mean, most manufacturers- There's only one powder. other manufacturer that does it that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. And that's the Logix company, but I don't yeah. know if they still do it the way they used yeah. to do it. Yeah, I just, I, just want I, to be, I just want to make sure that everybody out there realizes that. So I don't want them to go home and use like, you know, basic white powder bleach on somebody's scalp and, you know, have the scalp anymore. <laughs> you but look saying? at what I'm saying. But the important thing, David, is the 20 volume. Yes, it's I understand soon. that. Yeah. Well, because... well you know, I, mean, I, I tend to do just the opposite. You know, for example, I mean, if I have somebody, I said what I mean by that is I don't go up and higher. higher. I try to go lower if I can. <clears throat> you know, if you've got finer to... textured hair, you should use 10 yeah. volume and not 20. Yeah. I mean, you know, especially if I'm doing like, like, like highlighting it with bleach and foils, let's say, for example, and I'm putting, you know, color in between the foils. I mean, I'll drop that developer down to 10, 10 volume. It gives you more working time. Yeah. And a slower lightning action. Yeah. 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 I've always felt this the lower the lower volume, slower action leaves the hair in better condition. And you have better oh. control over it. Oh look, Meg said that yes, logic still does do it that way. Um, I'm glad. I, I don't okay. know. Well just a, just about as a warning anymore. here. I you know, um, Julie has a question here. She says, How can I mix my lightener for coarse hair if I don't use chromastics? I I I, I mm, it depends upon it. Well, first of all, if you're mixing a lightener and your lightener has persulfates that are added to it to increase it, then that's how you increase it, by increasing the, the amount of the persulfate in the product. That's how most bleaches work. Um, if we go back in time, I'm going to take you back many years ago. I don't know um, because I don't use all the different brands anymore. But I'm going to take you back in time to when we had the, the most popular bleach in America. There were two of them. One was called Born Blonde from uh, Clairol, and the other oh, was... Oh, I used to uh, love Born Blonde. <laughs> and the other one was the Wello Bleach, um, and both of them required 
uh, persulfates to be added to them. And the more persulfates you added, the stronger it became. But they were always used with 20 volume developer. That's the yeah, old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those were the days of oil bleach, right? They don't make oil bleach anymore. You can't find that anymore. Oh, um, uh, oil bleaches. Well, here's the thing with oil bleaches. Um, all bleaches are basically oil bleaches. It's just that we we used to call them different by different names. We had we confused everybody in the old days. But that's the way it was. Okay, but, Luke. Luke, uh, Luke here says um, that he finds that most companies are now making powder lighteners and cream lighteners with barsulfates added in. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, notice what he also said right below it. Uh, yeah. Don't go over 20 volume. Um, yeah. It's because of burning uh, yeah. of the scalp. There's a tremendous amount of lawsuits going on in America right now. Yeah. There are seven that I'm aware of that are uh, uh, salons that uh, have just highlighted people's hair. And it has ble bled out and burned their scalps and caused tremendous damage to their skin. Um, you know, I think I always thought I always say, you know, on the scalp lightening is is one of the most difficult things we can do in 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 the, in the world of hair color, because of a couple of reasons. First of all, you want you want to make sure you can do the do you know treat the hair right so you don't destroy the hair, and you also got to be careful for the scalp, and yeah. and the key of course to a perfect bleach out. I'm sure the key the key to a perfect double process blonde or even a fashion shade for that matter is the bleach out. It's all about the bleach out. It's not about yeah. the toner. It's all about the bleach out. Yeah. Um, we have a question about, is this going to be on YouTube? The answer is yes. When the, I'm recording this entire session. So when it's all done, uh, it takes 48 hours. Uh, but the, the entire presentation will be on YouTube. So you'll be able to go and visit and uh, view it at any time in its totality. Notice what I say here. Lightning, contributing pigment, and brassiness are all directly proportional to texture. This word should be are, not is. No. Yeah. Got it all to texture. But I yeah. want to I want to show you something now that's very important. And I'm I want David to take over for a bit here because this is a really important chart that most people don't realize. Um, for instance, when you see uh, people tell you, well, we have a high lift blonde and it's going to light four or five levels <clears> of your hair. And it never does. And you always end up with really ugly color. David has put together a really brilliant chart for this. And here it is. David, um, I'm going to let you take over for a few minutes and okay. explain this. All right. Okay, I put this chart together because there's so much confusion out there about levels of hair color and how to make how to mix hair color whatever and the main thing that i find is that is that i mean they said this when i used to work at wella and all the manufacturers continue to say this today they'll say something like with our product line you can get up to five levels of lift with with the color line and that's not true i mean it's, it's just not just a falsehood and they'll tell you for example if you want to lift up one one to two levels use 20 volume if you want to use uh lift three to four levels use 30 volume and if you use uh, 40 volume, you get up to five levels of lift. So in theory, that means that we should take someone who's a level four and uh, and with 40 volume developer, lift them up to a level nine and give them a beautiful light blonde. And of course, you can't do that. That's impossible to do. Can you see my cursor here? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is basically just a chart that every, every manufacturer has something that looks similar to this. And all it says basically is the middle here, we're going from levels one through 10. And these are the natural colors on the left-hand side. And what this, what, what this chart says is that, is that, for example, whatever color is here, like medium brown level four, when you start to lighten level four, you're going to pull a strong red orange. If you start to lighten level six, you're going to pull a gold orange. So this is kind of universal knowledge. What I've done differently here is that I've went in and I've, and I've subdivided each one of these levels into three different segments. So we have, for example, fine, medium, coarse, fine, medium, coarse, fine, medium, coarse. So what I like to say is whenever you're thinking of, a, of the, you know, when you're formulating product, instead of listening to what we've heard all these years about the level system lifting up four or five levels, don't think in terms of that. Think in terms of, I call these texture bars because that's fine. That represents fine texture, medium texture, coarse texture. So, for example, if a client is a level four and she wants to be a blonde, don't go up five levels and think you're going to get that color because you're not. 
I'll say, look, like she's a level four. What texture is she? For example, let's say she's a coarse texture. Okay, she's a level four. Then you come to the coarse texture bar here and count up five levels instead of five, excuse me, five texture bars instead of five levels, and you'll get a more realistic reading as to what you can expect to get from the hair. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to leave you right here to really nice light orange. And that's what you're going to get if you try to lift her up five levels. So this chart, uh, you know, really tells you the real deal about what to expect from hair color. And it kind of, you know, the, it, just, it just explains it much better than trying to explain the level system the old fashioned way. I noticed what uh, Meg said there. Um, excellent chart, David, that stylists can find in your book. Uh, yeah, I yeah. This thanks, thanks, nice Meg. Day. Thanks for the plug, <laughs> Meg. <laughs> yeah, this chart is inside my book called "How Hair Color Really Works." And in, by the way, I, I have several different versions. This chart here is about formulating color for anybody, uh, but also I have other charts. For example, the Redhead Book, where I segregate what I call the red zone and tell you how to work within the red zone. Uh, the one for blonde, single process blondes, I talk about the blonde zone and who's your best candidates for, for blonde. And you know, all different things. But when you really start real looking at charts like this, you can really see visually what can be done and what cannot be done. And you know, Tom and I have made careers out of, I think, and Meg's as well, make careers out of um, uh, dispelling myths that we've heard all these years. You know, rather the beauty school myths or rather the myths that we hear from hair color manufacturers about how hair color works. Because we don't only, you know, we haven't only worked for manufacturers behind the scenes, we've also done it you know, for 40 or 50 years behind the chair. So we know what works and what doesn't work. Uh, um, I noticed there's a question from Julie and Julie says there's persulfates in her lightener. Can I adjust the ratio of developer to powder instead? The, I don't know the, the, the answer to that, Julie. However, I suspect that if you change the ratio of powder to developer, then you, it will become too thick or too thin. And consequently, the develop the lightener will not work as effectively. Um, I don't, but I don't know the answer to that to that question. Uh, clay bleaches. Um, uh, Leanne is asking about what about clay bleaches? All bleaches, all powder bleaches contain clay. It's just simply the ingredient that makes them powdery. Um, uh, so now nowadays, you can buy extra clay to make your bleach thicker. Um, but all powder bleaches contain clay. Um, it's, it's just something new for us to buy in the marketplace. Uh, clay ble the clay is what keeps the um, persulfates um, in an equal proportion uh, throughout all of the powder bleach. Tom, I want to, I want to, can I digress for a second? Are you kind yeah. of done here? I want to go yeah. back to another chart. I'm going to click on number seven here. Um, you know, something to keep in mind also, I think that you, you go, if you put, when you put lightener bleach on even fine texture hair, fine texture hair will always be more receptive to any product, any kind of chemical uh, over coarse hair, right? So fine hair will bleach, will bleach out faster Yes. and become lighter, right? Yes. Uh, and then the other way around, fine hair will go darker faster and go darker in color, right? Yes. Okay. So it, fine hair, I always look at it this way. Fine hair will always move in every direction much faster than coarse hair. Coarse hair moves slower, okay? That's correct. Yeah. But I think there's one more thing that, that, that to consider here, and I know we have you have another whole class that we can do on this, but of course, that's the color of the eyes. Because sometimes I find people, even with fine texture hair, you know what? You get in that gold zone, sometimes you can't get it out. But if they have warm eyes or darker eyes, eye, com you know, eye color, um, their pigment sometimes is so damn hard to get out, you know? Um, or someone with, you know, lighter color eyes, it will tend to bleach out much faster. So uh, it's kind of you have to work between the two of the things, right? The texture and the eye color. Yeah, re remember, I did that whole seminar uh, on just eye color yeah. uh, a broadcast, and they, they can, anyone can go and look it up. But people with blue eyes are the easiest to color. To do anything to people with green eyes are the most difficult and the darker the brown of the eye the larger the granule of color consequently the harder to lighten the hair and then look what i did david my last page <laughs> oh you got a commercial very good there you go <laughs> this is this is my newest book and where, where it could be found um uh, david 
it, we've been online now for 45 minutes. Is there anything you want to say before I before I kill this uh, presentation and before uh, no, we no, post it? it? It was a good one. I hope that everybody... Uh, oh, look at this. Julie says looking at eye color has been a saving grace. Yes, it has. Most people don't realize how important your eye color is uh, in all of this. Um, uh, yeah. If you, if you didn't attend that class, by the way, I think, Tom, you have it on your Chromastics website, don't you? It's um, also on YouTube. Uh, uh, go to YouTube, Tom yeah. Dispenza. Yeah, check out that one with, um, with about, about eye color. Tom has a really, really incredible uh, good class that he does just based strictly on eye color and how it affects hair color. And it's really, really important, uh, great information. Okay. Any... Would anybody like to comment about anything before we call it quits today? I actually do want to say something. I'm sorry. I'll jump in if you don't mind. Yep, go ahead. Um, I just want to let you guys know that Tom and I are doing a two-day class in Las Vegas, September oh, yeah. 23rd and 24th, right, Tom? 24th, 23 and 24 in Las Vegas. Last year, we did this class closed door 200 people we don't allow any more than 200 people come in and it's very very intensive you know hair color theory workshop um it was really successful last year uh we have a lot of people from last year coming back again this year and um we've uh probably about 80 percent sold out now i guess but if you want to attend a two-day conference with tom and i in las vegas um tom give them the the web address there um uh, yeah, put it w in the chat. just type in the chat is ww oh yeah that's right i forgot www.hca.org yeah. so i'm here did uh worldwide hair colorist association dot org yeah just go yeah. there and you can sign up for the seminar if you like it's really gonna be great it's two full days uh, it's only um, two hundred ninety-five dollars, I believe, Tom. Right? Yeah, it's it's yeah. completely generic. It is not. Uh, it's yes. not. It's not. We don't talk about any one brand of color. It's totally generic. And last year, about 70 percent of the group was not. They they were from all over the world and from um, every brand of color that you could think of. Uh, they were there. Okay. Also, oh. we're both we'll both be at the Philadelphia premiere. If you guys want to come to Philadelphia and check that out as well, uh, Luke just said something interesting. Care to comment about those people who put a sprinkle of powder bleach in their high lift colors to bump up the action? Well, it does bump up the action, but it also destroys the ability of it to tone. So um, I, I'm not a I'm not a fan of putting powder bleach into any color at all. Um, Mags loved it and love you both too. Thank you, Mags. Um, uh, Leanne says sometimes she's on the fence about calling the difference between medium and coarse hair. Um, I don't know how to identify it. Is it, uh, David, how do you tell the difference between uh, medium and coarse textured hair? Um, you know, that, that is a tricky one. That is a tricky one. I've heard people say different ways, like tie it in a knot and, and all this kind of stuff. But, uh, I, I think that just, I, I do, I do think that just comes kind of with, with experience. And you know, we say medium, medium and coarse, medium, fine, medium, coarse. But in reality, there's really more than that. There's really probably, you know, I would say five different textures if you really want to split, you know, split hairs per se. But I think that just kind of comes with experience. So, you know, fine hair is, I mean, I always think in terms of like, you know, if the hair is longer, if you can put it in back and, you know, pull it back in a, in a ponytail and it's really skinny like a pencil, that's fine hair. And if it's a little bit fatter, that's medium hair. And if it's, you know, thicker, it's coarse hair. But so it's hard to tell. I, I don't know how to tell you how to tell that part. But what I will tell you this is this. Um, I always think of when it comes to coloring those textures, especially um, bleaching the hair, I think in terms of I think in terms of fabric. I always say, think to myself, like coarse hair is like denim. You know, you can really beat up denim. You can wash that wash, wash a pair of jeans a million times. And the more you wash it, the, the better it gets. So it can take a lot of abuse and coarse hair can take a lot of abuse where medium texture hair, it reminds me of cotton, like cotton chinos, you know, it can take a medium amount of abuse, but by the same token, it can't take as much abuse as for example, denim and fine texture hair is like a silk blouse or a silk shirt. 
You know, you can't even put a silk blouse in the window in the wash machine at one time without it getting destroyed. So I think once you once you can analyze which one is which, you have to you have to re really treat each one, you know, uh, the way that you treat fabric. And I use that analogy a lot. OK, um, Linda, I don't understand what your what your question is here. So uh, just send me an email and um, and uh, and I'll answer it for you uh, in depth for whatever it is. Um, Everybody, thank you so much for being online. David, thank you for yeah. for uh, oh, my pleasure for helping. And I'm thank you guys. To, Thanks for coming. I'm going to kill this event. All right, guys. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.